I want to give a big shout out to King Hiram 21, Big Joe, Cheryl Fowle, DH, Tanya D, Tsunami the Wavy, Sharon Lamboy, Rodney B29, Mofro, Caravan, Consuela Butler, Jamon Russell, Elisa George, Legend Kiani, Derek, Big Dog Coleon, Jessica Ann, Magic, Miss Trill Water, Lara Ann, Tasia Moan, K5, Kevin Wilson, Christian Grimes, ATL Flow, Heather R. Baskin, Sly Harway, Jay Allen, Texas T, Ayo Mari, Travis Sims, Natalie Davis, big shout out to Natalie Davis, Christian McGrady, Corey Mitchell, Ebony B, Personal Defense Armani, The Don Hendricks, Mia Villegas, Rex One Kettles, Duchess, Solo D223, Ebony Williams, Damani Alexis, Cooking with Rhonda Galore, KD, Believing is Seeing, Trencher 813, Anthony Blue, F95, I don't know about all that now, Monica, E Murder 23, C20 Beats, Marshana Bailey, Albert Wilson, Rhonda Lacey, Derek Watson, Ronique Robinson, Alice Farrell, Tim Adams, Duchess, KD, AG, Sticky Situations, Demetri Williams, Brandon Castle, Draymond Green, Red, big shout out to Red, John, Gary Bethel, Vince Staggers, Aaron Allen, Nikki, Scott Cherry Sr., Essence Malone, British Ratliff, Jarrison Carter, All-Star Kelly, 007 Vaughn, I been shouted you out, I remember that, Tony Patterson, Ashley Skinner Brown, big shout out to y'all, let's get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like this yeah. one. Uh, yeah. What the fees? 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 What up, though, y'all? It's your boy Bill. I just ran to the store real quick, bro. I was just sitting here for a minute. It actually feel good out here, so. I'm going to tell the story out here. You got two brothers. You got Gerald in New York. Now, of course, they both from New York because they brothers. New York was in the dorm way before Gerald finally came in. When he came in, you know, it was a big scene. Oh, bro, that's my brother. And New York was running around telling everybody that Gerald is his brother, of course. So, you know, New York come letting him know who everybody who he is. Like, he like, yeah, that's CB. You want Chris Brown, Al Green, whatever. He got it. Oh, yeah, this the store man. Bro, got this. Oh, yeah, this is my partner. You know, just giving them an introduction on everybody in the dorm. Me and New York was all right. We wasn't the best of friends and nothing like that, but we was okay. We ain't had no issues. He used to come spend money with me sometimes. Sometimes we just sit there, chop it up, talk about something. I couldn't be too, too cool with New York because he was like kind of, um like animated like he he just extra that's the word i'm looking for he was just kind of extra you know what i'm saying and that ain't really my thing like whenever something happened new york always got something extra to say about it new york always you know it's just he just extra with it and he was loud and and he was loud you know and he was a part of a different group but even though that didn't really mean nothing because in the earlier times i would only deal with my folks because I always had a mindset, like, if it ever go down one day, I don't want to have to be trying to attack somebody that I'm real cool with. But as time went by, I started, you know, it, it wasn't even about what you was affiliated with. It's just about, it ain't about where you from, it's about how you come. If you if you solid, if you 100, then I'm rocking with you. It don't matter what you is. But he, he you know, he just wasn't, he just was too loud. And Now, before I go into that, let me explain what these people look like. New York was kind of stocky, light-skinned, about my height. Gerald was skinny, a little shorter than us, dark-skinned dude. Both of them mid-20s. 
Gerald get into a situation with the Crips. You can hear them saying something about some money. The Crip dudes mounted up. New York go running down there, telling them they got him effed up. So, you know, New York is a blood. All the other bloods go down there. So now it's like a blood and Crip standoff. So now you got all kind of people running around the door and whispering about the dude Gerald saying that he's a blood. Now, I know that's not necessarily true, but in prison, it go like this, bro. When there is a serious situation, when there is a serious situation and things can go down, the opposite group don't have time to be figuring out who is affiliated with this, who is affiliated with that. I don't even give a damn. If I'm a part of this group and New York is a part of that group and you're a civilian, but I get into it with New York and his guys mount up and you even looking like, you know, you with them or whatever, I'm going to automatically make a mental note that you're with them. So if it ever goes down on them, I'm going to get you too. So people start whispering around the dawn like, yeah, uh, Gerald, yeah, he rocking with the blood. Gerald rocking with the blood, stuff like that. Nothing happened with the Crips. It all was settled. But over time, it was numerous different situations. And I paid attention to how Gerald was when he first came in the dorm. He was quiet. He was straight. He only kicked it with New York. He, I mean, he had come to me if he wanted to buy a Chris Brown CD or something like that. Or one, if I didn't have it, one of the other people that got it, he would do, deal with them in that manner. But he never, ever was like doing too much. You know what I'm saying? As time went by, he started doing too much, bro. Every time you turn around, he having an argument with the Mexicans. He having an argument with these people. He having an argument with them people over there. It was like a, a, a cycle being repeated. Some groups don't like that, bro. Like, they don't like that. I remember when I was in position, I very vividly remember telling one of my guys, hey, listen, I don't know what you got going on with him, but you better stop damn kicking it with him so much because he's not what we are. And, you know, it just makes me wonder if something happens between him and one of my guys, what are you going to do? How are you going to respond? So you need to stop doing that. But honestly, that might sound like I'm hating on a friendship or something like, no, nah, you don't need to be cool with him. Really, that's me saving him, the civilian at the same time, because I'm telling you, bro, if you're a civilian and you super cool with a gang member and you always with them, when it pops off, the opposite gang is going to get you too because they don't know. They don't got time to figure out if you're going to slide with them or not. So, you know, people that's a part of stuff, stay the hell away from them. Give a damn who it is. So one day, New York go to the hole. New York was jacking. Now, I told y'all what jacking mean is when you go to a secluded area when it's a female officer working and you're looking at her and then you're trying to get her to look at you. And if she look at you, they pull their stuff out and start jacking it while they're looking at the officer. Some officers is with it. Some of them is not with it. New York was jacking on the girl that was working the dorm. She was not okay with it. She called a cold. He went to the hole. So New York done been in the hole about a good week now. I told you, I'm the up front orderly. I had some Chris Brown CDs on me. I was trying to go pass it off to somebody. So I told my detail officer that I wanted to go to the kitchen for lunch today. Now, I told y'all before that I never had to go eat in the child hall. Whenever I was at work, I could tell the warden's secretary that I didn't want to eat in the kitchen. I want to eat lunch here. And they would give me a pack of noodles beef and cheese steak, a drink, like a, a, a strawberry or a grape drink. And, uh, you know, that just give me a little, a little meal that'd be like lunch for me. But this day I'm like, nah, I feel like eating in the kitchen. I want to go out there. So I go down there. When I go up there, the line's super backed up. All the staff members know me though. Cause I'm the warden's secretary, not the damn secretary. I'm the warden's orderly, meaning the person who clean up for him. All the staff members here, they all know me. So when I go in the kitchen and I see they all backed up, I shoot to the front of the line. Don't nobody question me because they don't know if I'm in here to eat or if I'm in here to do some work because I could be here for, I could be coming to help y'all anytime. So I went to the window, knocked on the window. The, the, the manager of the kitchen, she opened up the kitchen. She's like, what's up, Bill? I'm like, what's up? Y'all all right? Y'all backed up or something? She was like, hell yeah, man. We got these damn trays. These boys moving so slow. It was carts with trays on it with plastic wrap around it. Now, those is for the dorms that's on lockdown or people in the hole or people on the tip program. 
So I asked her, I'm like, where do these need to go? I'll push one of them down there for you. She said, oh, B, I really appreciate that. She said, yeah, take this one. This one go to the hole. So I'm like, all right, say less. So I go in there, I get behind the cart, push it. Push it all the way to the end gate. Wait on the officer to come open the gate for me. Push it all the way down the walk. It's another gate. They unlock that. Then I get to the front of the hole. It's another gate. The officer from the hole is a button on the gate. It's a button with a little speaker piece. So I press the button. So I hear the officer that's working in the hole. He was like, yo. I was like, this bill. I'm uh from up front. I'm coming to bring y'all y'all trays. So he was like, all right, give me a minute. So I sat there waiting on him, pushed the trays down there in the hole. And then when I got down there, he was like, hey, bro, you pass him out for me. He was being lazy because he supposed to pass him out. I'm like, yeah, I got you. Man, as soon I walk in the hole, see Bill, see Bill, see Bill, say see Bill, say see Bill. Everybody go to call your name. Whenever you go to the hole, especially if you don't work there, but everybody on the compound know you, bro, everybody finna call your name. They need you to get a book from their homeboy room and bring it to them. They need you to go get them a wick because they trying to smoke. A wick is just you set a piece of tissue on fire and bring it to them so they can do what they do with it. They need you to go get them some ice. They need some water. They need this. So, you know, I went through there passing out the trays, running around doing stuff for people. Somebody calling me. He telling me his room number. The voice sound familiar, but I don't really, I'm not really thinking. So I get down and I jump over the rail. I open up the flap. I'm like, what's up, bro? It was New York. He was like, hey, C. Bill, what's up, son? C. Bill, what's up, son? I'm like, what the hell going on, New York? Boy, you been back here for a minute. Beard done grew out and everything. He like, yeah, man. Man, tell Gerald, bro, send me some food and some hygiene back here. Man, tell him I'm hungry as hell, bro. I ain't got nothing back here. I said, all right, for sure. He said, you still in the dorm with Gerald? I said, yeah. He said, man, tell Gerald. I said, send me some stuff back here, bro. I'm like, I got you, bro. Say less. I'm, I'm going to let him know. I'll come back down here tomorrow, though, bro. He like, all right, say less. So when I go I go to another room, when I leave his room, some dude like, hey, B, I got a $200 green dot right now, bro. I just need a bunch of food and a bunch of Chris Brown CD. But this is the thing. At this time, Green Dots wasn't even, I mean, people still use them, but you know, we got Cash App now. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm always skeptical on these Green Dots because I know people would play games, especially once the Green Dot era was over with. So I told him, I said, listen, I ain't going to be able to come back today, but I'll go to the dorm when I get off. I'll load the money, if the money good. And listen, I'm not playing no games. We don't play games. You already know that. If I call it and it's not good, there is nothing you can tell me. I don't care if you say, my man, my mama. I don't care who you say put the money on there. We're not going to play games, bro. So if you got any intentions on playing any games, I'm letting you know right now I'm not going for it. So he's like, nah, bro, I already know how you rocking, bro. I know you don't play no games. So I'm like, all right. He give me the green dot. He said, give me a hundred worth of food and a hundred worth of Chris Brown. I said, all right, say less. Shoot out the dorm. You know, I go finish up my job, go back to the dorm. Once I get back to the dorm, first thing I do, holler at my guys. When I used to come in the dorm, I always used to ask them, anything happening here today? Anything going on? Because I've been gone all day from 6 this morning to 3, 4 p.m. So I don't know if it's been some smoke or a standoff, anything. I always ask them that before I get too comfortable pulling out my phone because I need to know if I need to be aware of something. So they're like, no, everything good. Everything been straight today. I'm like, all right, cool. Pull the phone out. Go on the Green Dot website. Type in the, type in the 16 digits from the card number and load to the card. It say success, $200 has been loaded to your car. So I had already had a bunch of garbage bags that I had took from my little job just for when people, you know, make orders like this. You know, like if you go get a, a bottle of NyQuil, like the medicine cup, like that's that big. So I was selling them for $50 a piece, but I had a three for a hundred deal. So if you buy, if you spend a hundred at one time, I give you three of them. But if you buy one, it's 50 a piece. So I filled up the medicine cup three times put it in the glove, the plastic glove, tied it up. That's for that, honey. Then for the food, it was 15 for every 25 you give me. So I gave him $60 in food. So I put it all in the garbage bag, tied it up, put it in another one, doubled it up, tied it up. I just slid it under my bed for later on. So I'm just chilling throughout the day. I come out my room to get some ice. I see Gerald out there. I'm like, damn, I forgot I had a message for him. So when I walk up on Gerald, I'm like, hey, bro, he like, yeah. I was like, hey, uh, I had went to the hole today. New York told me to tell you that he down bad. He needs some food and hygiene. He was like, all right, say less, bro. Say less. Pulls a phone out of his pocket. I was like, hold on, baby. I'm going to call you right back. That's when I realized he had something in his ear. I looked at his ear. 
He got a little damn earpiece in there or something. He ain't got the phone. He like, yeah, man, I done got online, boy. I'm like, oh, I feel you, but that was up. That was sound. I'm, I'm thinking now, like, he was real cool with New York. He done went and got a phone. New York been gone. But he, I mean, he done came and spent $25, $50. He ain't never came with no damn amount of money where you could get a phone. Thousand dollars, you know, nothing like that. But you never know nobody's situation. So I kind of just started peeping him out for the rest of the day. The blood dudes, he rocking with them. He with them every day, he in their room. So I'm like, oh, they probably going to, you know, make him one of theirs or something like that. Eventually, over time, you know how it go. When I'm leaving out the next morning to go to work, I'm about to shoot to the hole first because I got that big-ass bag of food. Now, most of the cert team cool. They ain't going to do nothing lame. But if you get caught on the walk with all that food, if the police on the BS, they can take it from you and say it's contraband because they know you're taking it to somebody. And they like, what are you doing with all, out here with all that food? The store brings the food to you. You have no business being on the walk early in the morning with all this food. They have the right to take it from you, say it's contraband, and don't give you a damn thing back. A lot of them, they was cool with me anyway. So I wasn't really having, you know what I'm saying, sometime. But I still had to creep and sneak just in case. So I leave out early that morning with the laundry bucket. I take the laundry bucket. Everybody threw their clothes in the night before to go to the laundry room. The hole is literally right next to where all the laundry stuff go down there. So when everybody got their clothes in there, I take some of the clothes out. I throw the big bag of food in there. I throw some clothes over it, and I push the cart out early in the morning. I got the Chris Brown in my pocket. So I slide out there, get all the way to the end. Then when I make it to the hole, I press the button, officer, I'm like, yo, woo -woo -woo. this was a cool officer. I'm like, yo, I got to bring somebody some food. So he's like, nah, ain't nothing. I was like, man, this bill from up front, man. I'm the up front order. Let me just drop this food off, man. Come on, man. So when I say my name, they know I ain't on no BS. So they're like, all right, man, hurry up. So uh, they come, let me in the gate. I push the cart down there, snatch the food out, run the dude room, give him the Chris Brown, give him the food. New York calling my name. I remember. I run over there to New York room. I'm like, hey, I told him what you said, bro. He said he got you. Just give him a minute. He said he got you. He gonna F with you. So he's like, all right, bro, man. I don't trust none of these other people, bro. They be trying to steal out your stuff, bro. I know you. He was like, I don't trust none of these other people, son. I know you ain't gonna steal out nobody's stuff, Bill. He was like, man, he give you something, bro. Bring it to me personally, son. I'm like, all right, I got you. Time go by. Man, I say probably about a good two weeks done went by. I'm talking to my partner. Because my route of getting the Chris Brown in done slowed up tremendously. So it's another dude on the other side of the compound that be having it. He just got knocked off. He just got caught with all kind of stuff. I'm on the phone with my partner like, bro, I'm trying to see who got something for a good little ticket. Who got a good price? So they say, man, yo, darn, he ain't even been here that long. I say, who? Say his name, Gerald or something like that. I say, Gerald? He like, yeah. I'm like, man, Gerald ain't got nothing. He's like, you crazy in the head. Them folks say Gerald having it. So I'm like, hold on, bro. Stick my head out the door. Say Gerald. Say Gerald. He stick his head out the door. He's like, yo. I'm like, holla at me, bro. Hold on. I tell a partner, I'm like, I'm going to call you back. Get off the phone with him. Two minutes later, knock at the door. I'm like, yo. He like, Gerald. He slide in the room. I'm like, bro, you got some Chris Brown for sale? He go to smiling. Man, hell yeah, boy. I done came up. I done came up, man. I got Chris Brown phones. I got all kind of stuff, but I done came up. So I'm like, no, but I didn't know that. Why you ain't tell me? He's like, man, I ain't see it. I know you be having your own motion. You feel me? I'm like, man, hell no. I need a can. What the ticket is on the can? He was like, I really want 1200 but because you showed me love when I came in the dawn, you gave me decent prices, he said, just give me nine. I'm like, come on with it immediately. So I cashed up him $900. He gave me the can. I broke it all down. I got 60 cups. 60 cups. Sell them for $50 a piece. I take 10 of the 60 off the dribble. I said, I'm going to keep that for me because I was smoking Chris Brown at the time. And that's going to be a major profit. It's going to be hell of a profit. Now, Gerald done cranked up some type of way. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he got a mule. I don't know if the blood dudes let him in the door with them. I don't know what he's doing, but he done came up some type of way. One day, I'm leaving work. One of the orderlies that work in the hole was calling my name. So I ran to the gate. I'm like, what's up? He gave me a kite. He like, huh, this for you. So I'm like, who this from? He was like, man, I don't damn know. So I go to the dorm. I read it. It's from New York. He like, hey, Bill, I don't know if you ever told what's up or whatever. I don't know if he ever gave you anything for you. But man, holler at me, bro. I'm back here down bad, bro. I ain't got no... uh. I ain't got no deodorant, no toothpaste. You know, I'm on store restrictions, so my folks can't put nothing on the books. 
Tell Jerry Holland. Now, this is what I did think about. I was like, yeah, this your brother. But at the same time, you in the gang, bro. You is in the gang. You know what I'm saying? Tell them niggas to send you something. You know what I'm saying? Tell Jerry what he said. He's like, oh, yeah, damn, I forgot. He was like, man, I'm going to bring you some stuff down here to your room, bro, before you go back to detail. Take to him. I'm like, all right, say less, bro, say less. So throughout the day, I'm chilling whatever one of the blood dudes came in here and hollered at me about some cigarettes. They trying to credit some cigarettes. So I said, I'm going to just see. I'm going to say the same thing now. I said, hey, that boy New York, he, uh, I forgot. He told me to tell one of y'all, man, he said he down bad right now, bro. He said he ain't got no soap, toothpaste, deodorant, nothing, bro. He said uh, he needs some food, he needs some hygiene, he needs something. So dude, like, man, I ain't studying New York, man. New York always doing some stupid shit. Trying to jack on that lady. No, damn man. Nigga tired of New York, bro. He need to take his ass back to New York. So, you know, I just laugh it off. I'm like, all right, yeah, for sure. Before I leave out for detail the next morning, I think about it. I go up there to Gerald's room, knock on the door. Do, 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 do. Pull the door open. I'm like, yo, Gerald. I don't be too loud in case his roommate sleep. So he look up real quick. I'm like, I'm getting ready to go to detail. You say you had something for New York. So he's like, I'm going to get it when I get up, bro. I'm like, all right, I close the door, I leave. As time go by, it's like every time I turn around, New York sending the kite for Gerald. New York saying, do this, do that. Uh, man, holla at Gerald, holla at Gerald. So I got tired of it, bro. And when I came back to the dorm and I really felt, I kind of felt bad. I felt like I should have been did this. But I'm like, nah, I ain't shouldn't have been did nothing because I ain't got no... I don't have no obligation to you or nothing. But, bro, I came back to the dorm, and I had, like, every hygiene item, bro, I had, like, five of, except for soap. Soap, I had about 20 of, because they was only a dollar. All the other stuff was more expensive, but I used to stay stacked up on hygiene. So one day I got a little bag. I tied a knot at the bottom because the bag was big. I turned it into a little bag. By the time the knot at the bottom, only putting about that much space in it. I put him a bar of dial soap. Uh, a, a degree deodorant, a toothbrush, Colgate toothpaste. I put him a shampoo in there, a mouthwash. <coughs> and then I threw about 10 packs of noodles in there. Oh, and I put him a, a, a bottle of lotion because I didn't really use the lotion because my skin, bro, lotion don't work for me. I got to have Vaseline or something, you know, something thicker like that. Like if I get out the shower, Put on lotion, I'll be ashy in 10 minutes. That don't work for me. So I had a bottle of lotion. I, ain't, I don't even know. I think somebody paid me with it. I threw a bottle of lotion in there. I gave him about 10 packs of noodles, uh, a summer sausage. I think I put two honey buns in there, and I put one drink in there, one uh, like a Pepsi or something. You know, it wasn't too much, but it was a little something to give him something. So I tied it up, went back to detail, made my way to the hole when I left, brought it to him. Soon as I stuck it through the flat, he said, hell yeah, boy. Knew my brother was going to come through. Knew my brother was going to come through. And I felt bad. I'm like, damn, bro, this your real brother. You done had motion. You done got stuff cranked up. You ain't sent this man nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that ain't your responsibility, but this your brother, folks. Send the man something to eat. Send him some hygiene products or something. And I wanted to keep that going, bro, but that's just not me. I'm, I mean, I don't want to make nobody else look bad or nothing, but hell no, I like people to tell me that. Thank you. But I wanted to keep that going. But I told him, I was like, nah, bro, that's from me. So he looked up at me. He said, huh, this from you? I said, yeah, bro, you done reached out to me a lot of times, bro. I mean, I pass the message every time you tell me to. But I just, you know, I know you, bro. I done been around you. You ain't no bad person. You, know? you ain't had no issue with me or nothing, bro. So I just brought you something down here. So he was like, damn, C. Bill, for real, bro. Then he dropped his head. Then he looked back up. I know that look, bro. That's like the embarrassment of a man, bro. Where a man asks a man for something. And you feel like you a man, so you shouldn't be asking another man for something. Or a man see you down bad and he give it to you. And then you just like, damn, bro, ain't no way. I'm supposed to have it myself. I know that look. I know that feeling. He's like, bro, when I get out of that hole, bro, and I get myself together, that's on my mama. I'm going to pay you back. I'm like, bro, you don't owe me nothing, New York, bro. You straight with me, bro. And I'm like, what the hell are they talking about when they say they going to goddamn let you out the hole? He like, man, these folks tripping, man. He told me they talking about next week. You and the manager talking about I can't get out the next week. But the man done been in the hole about two months at this point. I go back in the door. When I get back in the door, I can feel something. I don't know what it is, but I feel like some tension. I can just tell something different. 
I look around at everybody. You got certain people standing around, but they ain't just kicking it. Everything ain't just normal like it's supposed to be. Call one of my guys in the room. I'm like, the hell going on in here? Why is saying kind of strange? Hell, like, oh no, nah, ain't nothing going in there. Boy, Georgia got his ass punched all the way out. Got robbed for his phone. Folk took her own thing. They left that man with it some food. I said, no. He said, hell yeah. I said, who the hell did that? He said, the bloods. I said, why? He said, man, I don't know. They had something going on. They was at the window and they was talking to people through the window. Like they was like saying Gerald was lying about something. He was like, I don't really know what they were saying. But it was a bunch of bloods in here at the window with Gerald. And then there was some people on the outside of the window. And they was talking through. He said, man, one of the blood dudes just punched Gerald in the eye. Gerald turned like he was finna try to swing back. One of the other ones followed up, hit his ass. He said, man, about three blood dudes beat the hell out of Gerald in the TV room today. And he said, get what's so crazy. Get what, get what make it so bad. I said, what? He said, Robinson was sitting there watching the whole thing. Robinson is the officer. He said, I swear to God, Robinson was watching the whole thing. That man ain't break it up. He ain't call no cold. He ain't do nothing. I said, damn. And that's the danger, bro. That's another reason I tell y'all, stay out of the prison. Don't get in trouble. You're not going to always be saved, folks. You could be getting pulled out. You might got an officer sitting there looking at you like, damn, they went in his ass. So might not do nothing about it. I done seen it. My last few bombs of uh, Chris Brown CD that I had, had sold. And I wanted, I needed some more, but I ain't seen Gerald. And if it, what bro just told me is true, I know he probably in the room. You feel me? If he look beat up. I didn't want to go up there and ask him or holler at him or nothing. I was like, I'm going to just let a little time go by try to figure something out, you know, on a different type of way or whatever. So the next morning when I'm getting up, getting ready for detail, I hear a knock at my door. It's 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, yo. They're like, Gerald, bro, Gerald. Like, the voice low. I'm like, come in, bro. Open the door. Gerald walking in. He got a towel over his face. Now, even though I understand what they said, immediately, my heart went to race and I snatched the candy bar off the bed. I had the candy bar laid on the bed while I was getting ready and stuff, putting my shirt on. When I seen the towel swinging, I hurry up and snatched the candy bar, bro. It, it just was, a, it was out of, it just was, I was, bro, when people finna run down on you and they trying to hide from the camera so the camera can't see who you is running in the room, sometimes they'll throw a towel over their face. So that was just a reaction, a natural reaction. When I looked up, he was like, nah, bro, nah, I ain't no nothing crazy. When I realized, you know, who it really was, despite him saying his name, that's when I threw the candy bar back on the bed. I'm like, oh, nah, my bad, bro. What's up, though? Man, I like this, bro. This man whole left eye shit up under the eye fat. I was like, damn. He was like, hey, bro, I need you to do me a favor, bro. I'm like, what's up? He was like, man, I need you to take my phone, tell him his homies tripped out on me. They trying to say I'm lying about some stuff like I'm playing games with their name. He said, man, these folks jumped on me, but they robbed me. They took my phone, but I got this other one, but they ain't know. But I want to go and pass it off or they find out I got another phone and try to take that. Well, I'm like, well, listen, bro, I don't mind helping you out. I don't mind doing that, but you got to understand. I got a very good detail that I don't want to lose, bro. And it's metal detectors out there. I mean, it's ways around it, but... Bro, if I get caught with this, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to go to the hole. He was like, how much, bro? What the ticket is? Because he already knew he had to pay. He was like, how much, bro? What the ticket is? I was like, bro, I got to have every bit of 500 He said, come on, CBL, bro. Come on, bro. That's too high. I say, bro, the phone, you giving me something that cost damn that $3,000. This is a $2,500 product in here. You think 500 to keep it safe is too much? And then if I get caught with it, you know, you don't get your money back because this is a risk I took for you and I'm losing money. So I got to have 500, but that's the only way. That is the only way I can do this. So he was like, all right, look, bro, let me, uh, let me send it to you. Let me send it to you, bro. When you get back later on, I'm like, I'm like, hell no. Nah. He talking about, I don't already cut the phone off. I'm like, nah, mine's on. I can cut mine's on real quick. We still got time. I ain't got to be up there till six something. We got plenty of time. Just let me, let me see your phone real quick. Let me call my girl. So he called whoever he called on the phone. I give him the cash up, sent 500 right then and there. I'm like, all right, say less. I got you. Now, it's a lot of clothes out there that don't nobody claim. Could be for when people go to the hole. Whenever you, whenever the laundry cart come back in, the clothes that don't nobody claim, they just hang it up on the rail, all around the rail. And whenever laundry go out, if ain't nobody got it, whoever doing the laundry, they just snatch it up and throw it in there. So I went and got some of them loose clothes that I know don't really belong to nobody. 
put the phone in one of the pockets of the pants, wrapped it up, folded it up, stuck it kind of like in the middle of the laundry cart, pushed it up there. I get through the metal detector every time because the whole cart is made out of metal and stuff. Sometimes they'll still stop you and try to go through it, but they it was early in the morning. The people who was there was ready to take their ass home. They wasn't on all that extra stuff. I get down there to the hole, hit the button, got a finesse this officer to let me in. I'm like, now nah, I got to bring my homeboy his clothes personally because the laundryman did his clothes and we don't want it to get mixed up with all the other folks' clothes. So she let me come in. I pushed the cart all the way to the end, really waiting for the moment she turned her back because she ain't just the most police, but she ain't cool neither. So ain't no tell that she cool enough to let me bring him his clothes, but she ain't cool enough to turn her head if she see something. So I'm laying on her. I'm really just talking to her, finagling her. She turned this way to come close the salad pole. I hurry up, snatch the pair of pants out, and go into the dorm. Say New York. Say New York. I'm putting them on point while I'm getting close to his room. So I open his flap. He like, what's up, Bill? I'm like, hey, this Gerald phone. I say, bro, he just came and hollered at me that morning, bro. I fatty hell, face beat up. He said, yo, homies robbed him for his phone. Robbed him for everything. He told me he got this other phone, but he don't want them to know he got it. Because they might try to take this too. So he got there and told me to bring this to you. So he like, word, what they rob him for, son? What they beat him for, son? I'm like, bro, I don't know. He was like, man, they beat him bad, son? I'm like, man, the whole side of this face down bad. So he like, damn. So he like, all right, appreciate that, appreciate that. So he like, he ain't tell you the cold to it? I'm like, nah, he ain't tell me nothing. New York ends up getting out the hole the very next day. New York goes into the dorm directly next to the dorm we in. So we go out for yard, you know, Gerald, first thing Gerald do, break his neck running over there. He had the gate trying to talk to them or whatever. So I'm just busting my laps, me and four of them busting laps. When we get closer over here to the gate, New York go to call him my name. So I go over there, I'm like, what's up, bro? He's like, yeah, man, I made it out the hole, man. Woo -woo -woo -woo. So, you know, I holler at him for a minute, keep on walking. As I get closer, I could see his confrontation. I could see... It's some type of issue. Gerald looking through the gate saying, no, bro, I swear, you, it's like a movie, bro. He's literally saying, no, come on, New York, bro. Don't do me like that, bro. Don't do me like that, bro. And as I get closer, I hear New York saying, man, fuck you, son. Fuck you. You left me hanging, son. You left me down bad while I was in the hole. Man, fuck you, son. Fuck you, son. And... I'm assuming New York was bucking on his phone. He was bucking on him. He wasn't giving him his phone back. He ended up going back in the dorm from the yard car. It's like soon we coming out the yard, Gerald coming to my room. Now, you know, hey, don't start them coming to my room back to back. Hey, I don't know what you, I really don't know why they whooped your ass, but I don't want you all too close up on me. And people start thinking, what well, CBL got going on? CBL trying to protect the mayor now. Nah. Right, let me get a Chris Brown CD, bro. I got the, I got the food up there in the room. So I'm like, well, shit, go grab it. Why you ain't bringing the food with you? He was like, man, I got it in the room. I'm like, well, go get it. What the hell you come? It's like me going to the store saying, hey, let me get these bag of chips. I got the money in the car. Hell no, go get it. So he leave. He go to the room. He leave out. He come back with the food. He had the food for real. So he gave it to me when he come in the room. He was like, bro, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. So I'm like, what? What's up? You know, I'm. what the hell going on? Say so like, man, bro, the phone I gave you to get him, he he bucking. He talking about cause I ain't sent him nothing while he was back there. And you know what I'm saying? I ain't sent him no food. I ain't sent him no hygiene. He like, bro, just like Bronum said, bro, man be doing stupid stuff, bro. You feel me? Man, jacking on the lady. You know the lady don't want him jacked on, bro. That's why I ain't send him, man. And I was trying to teach him a lesson, bro. You know what I'm saying? Listen to him for a while. And then I was thinking like, bro, he grown. Plus, he ain't trying to listen to you. You know, but he's sitting here explaining it to me. So maybe I should tell him what I think, how I feel. So I told him this. I say, listen, bro, I have done some of my guys that way where they go to the hole and they'll be like, send me this, send me that, and I won't send them nothing. The reason I would do them like that as far as teaching them a lesson is if this is a, a repetitive cycle. This is something that they do often, all the time. I say, bro, long as you been in the dorm, this is New York's first time going to the hole. Not only is this his first time going to the hole, when you got into it with them Crips, New York was right there, had your back, ready to risk it all for you. When you got into it with them Mexicans, New York was right there, had your back, ready to pop for you. 
When you had an issue with some of his own homies, he was right there, had your back ready to pop for you. I said, bro, sometimes you got to weigh your options. You got to understand what's going on. I'm not saying be scary. I'm not saying let nobody start you, let nobody do nothing. But what I am saying is when you're a civilian and you're in this prison and you just came in this dorm and New York is the one that let it be known that this is my folks and he good. I don't want nobody messing with him. I'm riding with him if anything goes down. If he do make a stupid decision and go to the hole, and it's really now it's like his folks whose protection you've up under, bro, you send that man something to eat, bro. You send him something to eat, you send him some hygiene. It don't matter what nobody else said about him. A lot of times we get so caught up on what other people say. I'm about to tell y'all a terrible mistake I made one time. And I hate to get off subject, but I'm about to jump right back on it, but I got to do it. Make a long story short, I was like 16 years old. I was dealing with this girl. I liked that this girl, we was talking for a couple weeks. We made it official that we boyfriend and girlfriend. And then the very next day after making it official with her, I was talking to some of my homegirls who were super fine. And they was talking about my girlfriend. They didn't know it was my girlfriend. And then they was like, that damn girl so ugly. Look at her over there. She just so ugly. Damn, she ugly. And then I looked over at her and I cared so much about what they thought. And I got up and when we left, when we left, I went over there, found her by herself somewhere. And I told her I ain't want to be her boyfriend no more. And then she was like, why? And I was like, I just don't want to. And she was like, all right. You know, she acted like she didn't care. But as I thought about it years later, I'm like, damn, I cared about what other people thought so much. Obviously, she wasn't damn ugly to me because I was willing to be her boyfriend. Back to the story. Never go based off what nobody else say or think about nobody, bro. Use your own judgment. If this man done had my back, I don't give a damn what the whole prison could be saying about him. I'm still going to make sure that man got something to eat. I'm still going to make sure that man got some hygiene so he ain't sitting in that hot ass hole stinking and sweating all day. It was like, yeah, you right, bro. You right, bro. You know, so he was saying a little more stuff about little, little flaws New York got. None of that matter. So then I was like, but that's crazy, though, your own brother. And he was like, man, be honest, man, that ain't my brother. He was like, we both just from New York. And uh, I met him at another camp, and we was real cool. So when I got here, we just started saying we was brothers, but we ain't really brothers for real. This is the moral of the story I want to let y'all know. Sometimes, now this is not a situation where it's just like, it got to be beneficial to me, or I turn on you, or I cross you. Because clearly, New York had Gerald back way before Gerald got in position where he could be beneficial. But a lot of times, playing in these streets, bro, when you get in position or you start getting money or whatever, but I promise you, it'll be your homeboys, it'll be people close to you that start hating on you, that'll be jealous of you, and that'll be willing to do something to you or be ready to leave your side if you're not beneficial no more. And then, you know, even in this case, I got it. I don't give it to you. Even though I feel like Gerald should have sent him some stuff, at the end of the day, you can't get mad about my stuff. You can't tell me what to do with my stuff. So New York shouldn't have took that man phone like that. But at the same time, when you when you rocking with people like that and you playing in the streets, anything like that, bro, anything is subject to happen. Anything is subject to happen. So I just recommend anybody, everybody, you feel me? And, and, and when I made that video saying ain't no more loyalty in the streets, I noticed it's a whole lot of comments under it saying stuff like, Oh, that's just you and your partners. Oh, that's just y'all. Oh, no, nah, we lawyer you over here. Hey, bro, okay. I just come in and say, okay. If that's what you want to say, okay. Okay, fine. Y'all ass getting enough sticky situations. And see, I'm not saying ain't nobody loyal in the world no more because it is. But the majority of people in these streets, you out here doing stuff, you dealing, you running around in the streets, you doing whatever you do, and then y'all do something crazy and the police snatch up one of them guys that ain't cut from that cloth for real and say, hey, you gonna tell us exactly what happened or we pinning this shit on you, we gonna give you 30 years in prison. It was Lil Ray Ray from down the street. Bet they tell on your ass. It's your boy Bill, I'm gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What the fees? <laughs>